Terry O'Neill. Mr. Tarzan, I'm the area manager of Barfield. An extremely dangerous fighter with amazing speed, skill, power and agility. He was involved in hundreds of street fights and brutal battles, all whilst working on the doors in Liverpool. He is Britain's greatest karate practitioner. He became an author, an actor. My head's got stabbed. It's nothing serious, just a cut across the thigh, you know. It's only superficial, 11 stitches. And worked alongside Arnold Schwarzenegger in big movies like Predator, Commando and Conan, even becoming good friends with Arnold. Terry worked as a doorman alongside his friends and fellow martial arts experts, Gary Spires, known as the deadliest street fighter, who in his prime was a real force to be reckoned with and a brutally effective street fighter when needed. The head is a very dangerous weapon and as a blow to defend against it, the elbow is one of the best forms of defense against it. And after your first successful strike with the elbow, it's recommended to strike twice. Because the first time if you do damage to the jaw, the jaw will be open and broken. The second time, you'll put him away properly. He also worked the doors with Dennis Martin, self-defense legend, who would later become a top professional bodyguard. So Terry O'Neill was born in February 1948 in Liverpool, and as a child lived in Benson Street, which is off of Mount Pleasant. Terry's first inspiration to want to train and to become fit and strong and to be able to fight came from the Tarzan books and the weekly magazines that were out in those days. Tarzan books would show Tarzan having to fight against the natives. This inspired Terry to want to train his body to be muscular, agile and fast. And he wanted to learn to fight and be able to defend himself. And he certainly built himself an impressive physique with all the hard work and weight training. Years later, Terry would play a popular character in the 1995 TV series, The Governor. His character, Victor Braithwaite, was nicknamed Tarzan. And he was a very tough, muscular, strong and dangerous inmate who loved training and exercising. The character reminded me very much of Charlie Bronson. His character, Victor Braithwaite, was one of the most feared and respected men in the on-screen prison. After first practicing judo, Terry would start karate training at the age of 15. He would go on to train with instructors Andy Sherry, Vernon Bell and Tetsuji Murakami and gained his black belt from Sensei Enoida. He honed his skills and would, and would eventually become known as Britain's greatest karate practitioner. But going back to when he was 16 years old, he started doing door work at a place called the Tower Ballroom. The job was offered to Terry by a well-known wrestler named Tommy McNally. They would go on to be good friends. It was whilst, whilst working as a doorman, Terry was told, because he was quite small, he was told to wear a few jumpers to pump himself up, to make himself look bigger. He started weight training in the Universal Health Studio at, at around 12 stone. But with a good diet, hard work, he soon gained a lot of muscle, which meant he could take off the jumpers. Terry would also work the door at the Cavern Club, made famous by the Beatles. He worked the door with powerhouse and gentle giant, Tony Buck, who was a wrestling gold medalist in the Commonwealth Games in Perth, 1962. And as a British heavyweight wrestling champion, he remained unbeaten for 15 years. Tony Buck was very well known and respected in the area, a lovely man with amazing strength and known as a gentle giant. Tony had been seen on occasion to carry two fully grown men out of the club, one under each arm. He worked the doors right into his 70s. Tony sadly passed away in 2021 at the age of 87. As expected, there were many fights to deal with in the club. Terry was once looking after Petula Clark and whilst walking through the club, he was hit from behind by a woman holding a chair. Terry disarmed her. She then started kicking him. And being a woman, Terry was unsure what to do and froze up. But luckily one of the other doormen came over and dealt with the situation. Terry was now by this time highly skilled very fast and very strong. He was especially dangerous with his kicking and his roundhouse kick in particular was effective in, in taking down troublemakers. Terry could actually flip coins in the air, spin round and kick them before they hit the floor and he normally hit four out of five coins. That was the speed and the accuracy he had with his roundhouse kick. One day, the well-known boxer 
and doorman Jimmy Malloy turned up at the club and he was not happy with Terry. Jimmy Malloy had fought in 87 boxing matches and was a real tough man. He was working the door of the odd spot in Old Street and upon hearing about this doorman kicking people in the head, he decided it was out of order to kick a downed man. He didn't realise that Terry was kicking the troublemakers whilst they were standing up with his dangerous roundhouse kick. So Tommy Malloy was taking his coat off to fight Terry when this was explained to him. And then a friendly demonstration of the kick diffused the situation and later on they would become great friends. But what kind of people caused the bother in the first place in the clubs? Oh, people who for that did it, violent people. With me it was always a control of violence. I mean, yeah, I kicked lots of people in the head, but I was always well aware of what I was doing. My knowledge of anatomy is not to a medical student, but it's enough to know exactly where to hit people, where not to get hit myself. But these guys will, they're scum. They will start kicking people in the head with no thought or, or compassion at, at all. With me, if I was kicking someone in the head, I would put my foot exactly where I wanted to, and I'm not going to say I've done minimum damage to them. Like I said, I've done this maximum amount of damage. You've got two problems. The first problem is to make sure you don't go to hospital. The second problem is to make sure you don't end up going to jail. But if you think too much about problem two, you ain't going to get past problem one. Terry also worked the Vic in Victoria Street with his very good friend, Dennis Martin. Dennis Martin has an amazing story as well, and I'll put a link in the description to Dennis Martin's book, Working With Warriors, in which he talks about working with Terry and Gary Spires, who was a real force as well. So before I carry on, I just wanted to say a big thank you for watching so far. And if you have made it this far, uh, please give a like, please share the video, and please leave a comment. It really means the world to me, and I really appreciate your support. And uh, please subscribe as well if you haven't subscribed. It really helps the channel and it's free to do as well. So yeah, thank you very much, I appreciate that. Terry traveled to Tokyo in 1970 for the first World Karate Championships. He met both legendary fighter Gary Spires and respected teacher of Goju Ryu, Master Higa Ona. Terry Spears would go on to teach Goju Kai. Well, he adapted his style and called it applied karate. He, he created more close combat and a style more suitable for what he was doing, which was the door work. From the late 60s to the early 80s, Terry was very successful in karate competitions, winning the Karate Union of Great Britain Individual Kumite Championship, then winning seven out of 10 KUGB Kata competitions, then winning four out of five KUGB Kumite Championships. He was also KUGB Grand Champion three times. Terry was also part of a Great Britain team that traveled to California in 1975 to become Team Kumite Champions at the World Championships. This was after beating a very strong Japanese team. In 1972, Terry Wood, alongside his friend Steve Cattle, found the hugely popular Fighting Arts magazine, which would have a successful run right up until 1997. Back on the door of the Vic, Terry had been attacked and had kicked somebody, knocked him out and been Gary Spires also turned up to help out Terry the following night because they expected more repercussions. So Gary turned up, tooled up and ready to, ready to go to battle. Back in those days, door work was different. Uh, the, the clubs and pubs wanted the toughest fighters around and there was no CCTV like there is nowadays and a doorman would regularly hit rowdy customers or kick rowdy customers. Nowadays, the CCTV and doorman have to be very careful how they eject customers and you don't really see those days anymore of people getting getting knocked out by doorman. Now, I never met Terry, I didn't know Terry, but um, from what I've heard, he was a, a real good laugh to be around, always messing around, joking about, practical jokes, and real good fun to be around. I did live up in Liverpool for a year, um, and, I, and I've got a lot of Scouse friends that live in Liverpool, and they live in Milton Keynes, and I've got to say, they, they are all a really good laugh. If he needed to do it, he could turn it on, and he could be extremely dangerous. Terry was once ambushed by five men waiting outside the club. They all had koshies, wooden koshies. So Terry pushed his young companion to safety and dealt with the five men. He knocked four out and the last one ran off with Terry chasing him. Now Terry had bumped into Arnold Schwarzenegger at an airport one time 
and they got chatting and became friends and they kept in touch. Uh, so Terry was actually on set in Mexico with Arnold for Commando. And in 1984, Terry appeared in the very first of his many movie roles. He appeared in Conan the Destroyer with Arnie. And he would also be on other film sets to help choreograph the fight scenes with Arnold and other cast members. In the early 90s, Terry also starred in one of Linda LaPlante's critically acclaimed TV series, Civvies. Oi, hello. This place giving me all clear, is it? You and your mob drinking, no places. I asked you a question, yeah. pal. Come on, we're wasting valuable drinking time. I checked it out personal, so screw you. He also obviously played Tarzan in TV series The Governor. Terry was also in some massive movies. He was in Martin Scorsese's Gangs of New York. And Terry also appeared with Sean Connery and Catherine Zeta-Jones in Entrapment. And showing his acting skills in 2009, he won the Best Actor in a Short Drama Award for the film Giri. This was at the end of the, end of the PR International Film Festival. He also played a karate trained doorman in the series Liverpool One. Terry retired from karate competition in 1982 after a knee injury, but he always kept busy with his acting, his door work, his training students, his magazine, and his weight training. It's 2023 now, Terry O'Neill is now 75 years old, a man of so many varied talents. Uh, as a fighter, extremely fast, extremely strong, extremely dangerous and agile, and a man known as Britain's greatest ever karate practitioner. I just want to say thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, it really means the world to me, all your likes, all your shares and your comments. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It's free to do and it really helps the channel. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Thank you everyone.